6 o'clock, I'd like to now start the meeting. Will Hyman? Here. Gary Keith? Here. Jim Malfajo? Here. Jerry Riffle? Here. Wayne Worth? Here. Vice Mayor Jenkins? Here. Mayor Marina? Here. This evening we have our prayer and our pledge by Council Member Keith. Bless us as we gather today for this meeting. Guide our minds and hearts so that we work for the good of the community. Help all your people in Clarksburg. Teach us to be generous in our outlook, courageous in the face of difficulty, and wise in our decisions. Father, we praise you. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Like I've never done it before. <laughs> Approval of the minutes of the conference work session on November 10, 2021. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Approval of the minutes of the regular session of November 18, 2021. So Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Approval of the minutes of the special session of November 22, 2021. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Petitions, communications, and public hearings. Council Member Malfajo wishes to address the council. I've already given a copy of this to uh, council in the pre meeting, and, you know, I'm basically doing this for those that don't have social media. Mr. Mayor, fellow council members, and concerned Clarksburg citizens, I have recently seen a number of public comments slash posts related to the sharing of Mr. Tolley and Ms. Moore's resignation letters with members of the local press and media. Further, I have been informed that the city of Clarksburg conducted an internal audit of the city emails to determine who leaked this public information slash public documents. Let me be clear, there was no reason for the audit or to waste unnecessary resources on the sharing of public information. I shared the resignation letters with the press. I did this because I believe that the public has an absolute right to know what's going on in Clarksburg. And the local press slash vested stakeholders are entitled to know what is at risk given the actions and omissions of the current administration. If I have hurt anyone's personal feelings through my actions and the attention it has drawn, I sincerely apologize. However, again, these are public issues slash concerns and they shall not be swept under the rug. In closing, I invite the public to attend Clarksburg City Council meetings to speak to those, uh, to speak to these critical public issues, as the sort as the success of the Robinson Graham, Robinson Graham Performing Arts Center is critical to the revitalization of downtown Clarksburg. Humbly submitted, Jim Malfa Joe. Thank you. Marsha Broughton, 227 Park Avenue, wishes to address council concerning the Robinson Graham Theater. Thank you very much, Mayor, members of the council. On Tuesday evening of this week, WDTV aired an interview with the mayor. I was saddened by his shameless complaint that the media and public were discussing and inquiring as to the resignation of Ryan Tolley and Emily Moore. He complained that the resignation should not be a matter of public concern, as their resignations should be of no more interest than the resignation of any other city employee. He further implied it was inappropriate for their resignations to be shared with the public. The mayor and some members of city council do not appreciate the importance of the Robinson Grand Theater to the community, nor do they appreciate the incredible benefit of having two such talented, experienced, and dedicated people to manage our beautiful theater. The mayor says he and council support the theater, but when given the opportunity to use the federal CARES Act money given to the city to provide COVID relief to the arts, according to the newspaper, no money was given to or on behalf of the theater. The mayor has stated he was not aware that Ryan and Emily were frustrated with the lack of support given to the theater and its employees. It is the job of an employer to be aware of such things. 
No one leaves their dream job unless they are extremely unhappy. Council needs to understand that the community cares deeply about the success of the theater and it is its basis for the future success of the city. Many people have worked hard over the years for the, to assure the theater's success. Since its renovation and reopening, it has provided a wide variety of entertainment, a place for receptions, reunions, and meetings, which were not available in Clarksburg for many years. Council further needs to understand the financing of the theater renovations and quit espousing the misconceptions that the debt for the renovations is a drain on city resources. This is not true. There was no general obligation debt incurred to finance the renovations. All the debt for the renovation is secured solely by one third of one cent additional sales tax imposed as a result of the city obtaining home rule status. If the one third of the one cent sales tax fails to meet the obligation to the bondholders, the city has no obligation to pay it. The theater was qualified for this financing because the project was approved as an economic generator for the area entitling the, seri the city to such financing structure. Those who continue to say otherwise are at best misinformed and need to do their homework. My concern for the theater is shared by many. A long beloved educator in this community expressed sadness to my husband the other day over Ryan and Emily's resignation and the frustration in what he termed a scandal caused by the lack of support of this council and the mayor for them. It will be incumbent upon this council to conduct a nationwide search for people with the education, training, and experience necessary to replace Ryan and Emily. This will not be an easy task. Without this effort, the decline of the theater will be your legacy. We all hope you rise above your personal biases and agendas to look at the greater good and fully support the theater and thereby Clarksburg to find the talented, committed, and experienced managers now needed as the people of Clarksburg deserve no less, and it is your job as public servants to do so. Thank you. Rick Muriel, 116 Kelly Street, wishes to address council. Yes, thank you, Mayor and City Council. I got the on Kelly Street, been there for years, grandparents, aunts, uncles, over 100 years. Ran into a little incident about uh, two years ago, called 911 up Kelly Street, make a left. There was no, ever, no sign, no street address to that. Uh, the city police came, investigated. They said, well, there's no address, no street on it. I said, well, it's been like this for 100 years. So hopefully, possibly, we could get something going uh, you know, in respect to the parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, been there for a hundred years. Hopefully we could get something accomplished on that. Thank you. Thank you. City manager's report and comment. The city is assisting Santa again this year by sending your letters to the North Pole. His mailbox is in front of City Hall. Interviews were conducted for the position of firefighter. Meetings were held between city officials of Huntington, West Virginia and the city of Clarksburg to further discuss creating an unsafe building commission. The attorney will prepare a draft ordinance and we will meet to review the ordinance. It will be brought before council for consideration in February. The finance director and the city manager finalized the budget schedule and forwarded it to all department directors. From the police department, the department responded to 1,684 calls for service for the month of November. Franklin Sprouse will be sworn in on Monday, December 13th to the police department. Welcome to the team. The, the, public, is reminded that on, the public is reminded that on Friday, December 3rd, there will be no parking on, on the Winterfest, Winterfest Parade route from South Chestnut Street to 2nd Street on Main Street and Pike Street, and no parking on 2nd Street between Main Street and Pike Street. Any vehicles parked on route uh, after 4 o'clock p.m. could possibly be towed. From the fire department, the department responded to 254 calls for service for the month of November, which 145 were medical related. There were four fires for a total loss of $101,300. 
Michael Cross and Christopher Foster have been hired to replace James Smith and Lieutenant Gino Gallo, who has retired after serving 24 years with the city. Congratulations on your retirement. From City Parks, Will Connox Pearl was on site on November 24th and examined the pool plaster. It is their opinion that the pool plaster will rapidly deteriorate from this point forward due to the age of the material. Turf, or field turf performed repairs on the field on November 19th and will return to groom the field to make some additional repairs. From the Robinson Grant Performing Arts Center, the center has been awarded an additional $236,561 from the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program for a total of $709,685,000. These funds will be utilized for payroll, supplies, utilities, maintenance, and insurance. On Saturday, December 4th at 7.30 p.m. will be a screening of the film White Christmas. This event is planned in conjunction with the Christmas Winter Fest. On Sunday, December 5th at 3.30 p.m. will be the AMT Productions final concert of their 2021 Southern Gospel, Gospel season. It is Ernie Haas and the signature sound. Landau Eugene Murphy Jr. will be performing as part of the Home for the Holidays tour at the Robinson Grand on Saturday, December 18th at 8 o'clock p.m. From code enforcement, the department issued 23 building permits for a total project cost of $137,320. 14 notice of violations were issued and four structures were condemned. 23 residential and four commercial inspections were performed. Six vehicles were tagged for towing. Animal control responded to 28 calls for service with 11 animals taken to HCAC. From public works, crews boarded two nuisance structures, responded to 10 sewer complaints and picked up 12 tons of yard waste and collected leaves. The department has continued to prepare the city for the Winterfest and installing Christmas decorations throughout the city. And preparations are underway for the upcoming demo list, and the sewer department replaced 140 feet of sanitary sewer pipe. From the wastewater treatment plant, the plant treated 190 million gallons of wastewater with no violations to report, and the team is working on updating their risk management plan to submit to the EPA. That is the end of my report. Unfinished business to conduct a public hearing on the proposed adoption on third and final reading of a bond authorizing ordinance of the city entitled ordinance authorizing the acquisition and construction of certain extensions additions betterments and improvements to the existing public sewage system of the city of Clarksburg and the financing of the cost thereof not otherwise provided through the issuance by the city of Clarksburg of not more than 900,000 in original aggregate principal amount of sewer revenue bonds series 2021a a West Virginia SRF program providing for the rights and remedies of and security for the registered owners of such bonds authorizing execution and delivery of all documents relating to the issuance of such bonds approving a loan agreement relating to such bonds authorizing the sale and providing for the terms and provisions of such bonds and adopting other provisions relating thereto notices regarding the public hearing appeared in the exponent telegram on November 12th and November 19th I will now open the public hearing. Anyone wanting to speak for or against this public hearing may do so at this time. No one wishing to speak? I will entertain. So moved. Sorry. No, that's the next one. That's <laughs> that was just the public hearing. Okay. Okay. To consider for adoption on third and final reading following a public hearing there on of a bond authorizing ordinance of the city entitled ordinance authorizing the acquisition and construction of certain extensions additions betterments and improvements to existing public search system of the city of Clarksburg and the financing of the cost thereof not otherwise provided through the issuance by the city of Clarksburg of not more than 900,000 an original aggregate principal amount of sewer revenue bond series 2021 a West Virginia SRF program providing for the rights and remedies of and security for the registered owners of such bonds authorizing execution and delivery of all documents relating to the issuance of such bonds, approving a loan agreement relating to such bonds, authorizing the sale and providing for the terms and provisions of such bonds and adopting other provisions relating thereto. I will now open the public hearing uh, for the, this. No, just a vote. Oh, the vote. We have a uh, motion. motion. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? To consider for adoption on second reading a bond authorizing ordinance of the city which authorizes the issuance by the city of its sales tax revenue refunding bond series 2021A, 
road embankment repair project, the series 2021A bonds, and an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $2,500,000 for the purposes of refunding and redeeming in full the city's sales tax revenue bonds, series 2019B road embankment repair project, funding a reserve fund for the series 2021A bonds if necessary, and the payment of cost of issuance of the series 2021A bonds and related costs authorizing the execution and delivery of all documents which may be necessary in connection with the foregoing and matters relating thereto. We'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. New business. To consider for adoption on first reading an ordinance of the city which authorizes the refunding by the Municipal Building Commission of its lease revenue bond series 2012 Family Aquatic Center project the series 2012 bonds, the issuance by the Municipal Building Commission of its lease revenue refunding bond, series 2022 Family Aquatic Center project, for the purpose of refunding the series 2012 bonds and matters relating thereto. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Consideration of a resolution of the City Council of the City of Clarksburg <coughs> naming the alley that extends from East Pike Street in a southerly direction parallel to Kelly Street for 50 feet more or less ending at Hill Street as Muriel Way. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Deviating from the agenda to Council comments. Um, we'll start down there with uh, Mr. Mouse Joe. Uh, uh, I just want to say, uh, if you see something, say something. Pick up the phone and dial 911. I mean, we can't do anything if, if you know, we can't do anything 24 hours later. Uh, I think it's uh, it's been a pretty good response from the citizens of Clarksburg. I know sometimes it's a burden on the police department, but I think it's working. Second of all, don't forget Winterfest, the parades tomorrow night. Please come out. I've got a thousand pieces of candy, and I'm not taking any of it home. I'm telling you. Thank you, Kroger's. Um, and uh, everybody have a nice weekend. Thanks for coming. We go down here, Jerry. Um, I didn't write anything down. I can a little bit, but I'm not sure what I want to say. Uh, I do want everybody after the meeting to uh, walk downtown and, uh, and check out all the work that everybody's done to make the storefronts. Every storefront downtown has something decorative in there for Christmas. Um, the Young Men's Association, and their, the kids and their parents, uh, myself, Wayne, and uh, Mr. Imperial, we, you know, we, um, and Tina Yoke, and several other people, but the golf building, it's, you know, everybody look at it, it's got the brown paper on it, but you go down there now, you, you will, everybody's asking what's going in there, what, you know, it looks great. Um, all the kids came together, um, and Beth Hoskin, uh, Hoskinson, she, um, She's amazing when it comes to like her spirit, and uh, her alone can lift, lift the spirits of downtown by herself. She she decorated herself. Um, I think five storefronts, empty storefronts where there's no businesses in it. Um, it just it looks great downtown. Just, the business owners are they're excited. You know, it just they picked that up too. They decorated more than they have in years. And it, it just looks great. And it's going to be great for Winterfest, um, and they're in a parade. Um, in, in Winterfest, it's got everything. I've been heavily involved in working with it, and it's uh, it's taken a lot of. We started working on it like eight months ago, and it took a lot of people um, to help out with it. And there's a lot of great people that are coming together. It's going to be a great event, but the amount of people that came together to help out is really, uh, it's really, um, it's great to see. Um, and I mean, that's how things are supposed to get done. Not everything can be done by public works or things like that. Um, but the community coming together, putting things together like that is. Um, we've got the tree lighting, um, it's going to be parade, it's got seven divisions, it's going to be 80 some um, groups in there, um, high school bands, uh, I mean just everybody's going to be a part of it. And, and Winterfest is also Saturday from 10 to 6, we live nativity scene, some people are saying we're taking Christmas out of it, but we're going to have baby Jesus there, so I mean I think it's maybe a little bit, we're not taking Christmas away from it. Um, and, you know, I guess I will speak on the Robinson Grand a little bit. Um, 
I, I think, I mean, Ryan and Emily, they have done a great job. There's been a lot of great performances. Um, my son, he wants to be, a, you know, a magician because of the great um, magic show they had there. Um, it was a great event for me and him to go to, and it was, it was, it was great that they had that. Um, you know, I mean, just it's great because, you know, I can speak to my dad about it. He'll tell about movies he used to go to back then. So it's good. It, it's been a great thing. Um, I'm sorry to see them go. Um, maybe I should stop there. I don't know. Uh, personally, I think towards the end, I mean, there's, I, had, I had one disagreement towards the end, and I, just, I wanted more things to do for the kids. My expertise in education is in community development. I am heavily involved with the youth. I've coached T-ball. I've done the Young Men's Association. Um, heavily involved with the schools. I mean, I, I know what the kids want around here. I have my own son. He's seven years old. And uh, two years ago, we went and saw Polar Express during the holidays. It was great. Um, and my son's seven. He remembered that. And he, he, he asked me if there's going to be another movie, Christmas movie there this year we can go to. And there's not. Um, you know, I know this year's different, and I'm not really not trying to be critical. It's just, I think we just missed it a little bit when it came to the kids, um, and that, that's my only complaint. And, and I voiced that, not to them directly. I didn't, um, but that was my complaint. Um, and I, and I, I'm sorry to see them go because I think they really did a great job. Um, and I think moving forward, it's very important to try to get replace them um, as best we can. I mean, a national-wide search I agree with you, Ms. Broughton, and it's and not trying to take it lightly. Um, it's, it's very important. I understand that that's ran right, and it, it, it was. I'm not saying it, it wasn't. I'm just saying it could be vital in the revitalization, the revitalization of downtown. Um, and and it, the pandemic, it, it, it put a hurt. I mean, it's they are starting to get more, more momentum, and uh, it wasn't for the pandemic because I think they would have been hitting on all strides even before that. Um, but we have to move on, and I, I don't want to be critical. I don't. I just want. I want to move on the best we can, um, and, uh, and and just do it right when we do it when we do it next time. Um, I I don't. As a council, I, if I never saw us intervening too much, and it was we we allowed them to do what they was was good at. Um, I don't understand some of the complaints and things. And I mean, in other departments of the city, we are connected to them directly all the time. Um, but we allowed them to do what I think they were good at. Um, so I, you know, in moving forward, I just, you know, I just hope we do it in the right way and uh, and we keep that that going downtown. That's all I got. Thank you, Jerry. Mike. Yeah, I just want to invite everybody out to Winterfest. I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a little bit warmer. I don't think it's going to rain or sleet or snow, so that would be nice. Um, in regards to the Robinson Grand, um, I'm just going to be strictly honest with everybody. I really don't think the city should be in the theater business, especially when it comes to the daily operations. Um, we're not theater people. Um, having the Robinson Grand as a department of the city i don't really think it's a it's a good thing we should leave that up to the professionals i understand that we own it we own the building so um you know there's there's no selling it because then you have to pay back all those historical tax credits and that's up in the millions so but i do believe that you know we need to do one of two things this is just my opinion uh one we either need to you know create um, an external board you know, people who are in the theater business to run the daily operations of that. Or two, we need to find a private entity um, that runs theaters and have them run the daily operations of that. Um, I believe that would, uh, either one of those, I would 100% I would support. And even if both of those came together, if you had a board and a private firm. Um, so I would support either or of those a hundred percent because I feel like it's it's vital if we want the theater to be successful and every single one of us in this room wants the theater to be successful because if it fails we all fail that's just the bottom line and it has a great opportunity to generate economic development you know 
especially around around that area of, of, of that TIF district. I mean, there's, there's a lot of opportunity, but I feel like that we as a city government, um, you know, should not look at the Robinson Grant as a department, you know, that is run by, you know, I wouldn't say it's run, but overseen by a city manager. Uh, it should be, the operations should be run by either a firm, a private firm, or a board. And I'll support 100% either one of those. Hopefully that may be discussed in a future work session and we could all, you know, get some buy-in on that and find a, find a solution moving forward. Because, you know, whatever's happening now apparently ain't working. So um, that's just my opinion on that. And, um, and I wish you guys a uh, good weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, Gary? Me now. <laughs> so, uh, lots of excitement. Uh, excitement I don't think we needed and I don't think was good for us. Uh, just to start off here, I want to read a little excerpt from the newspaper uh, editorial that I think was directed at me and makes me super, super angry. While some city leaders and their minions like to scoff at big money people, they would be wise to beware that attitude the next time they go calling looking for support for current elected leaders' pet projects. I don't even know how much comment I need to make on that. I think that's pretty clearly uh, what's wrong with government, in my opinion. Absolutely what's wrong with government. I feel like the, that's a direct threat, uh, you know. I don't know what I did to become that target of the paper, and maybe it's not just me. I'm, I'm sure there's others up here that are in the same category, but uh, I feel like it's very unfair uh, to think that I have some kind of uh, anger towards people with money is ridiculous. I'm not a poor person. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm not against people who have money. It's ridiculous. Uh, I have lots of friends that have money. It, it's just crazy. So uh, did I come up here elected uh, saying I would donate any dollar I made from the city of Clarksburg? Yes. And have I done that? Yes. I would be glad to provide those records to anybody that would like to see them. I've not made a dollar off of this job. And do I think that there are forces that try to control what people on this council do? Yes, there absolutely are because they've called me and tried to get me to do things. And it's not worked out so well for them. And that will continue to be the case. And there's an election coming up here in a couple years. If y'all don't like it, get rid of me. Uh, I probably won't even run again because it's so frustrating trying to do this job. And, you know, the letters from the Robinson Grant employees did make me angry, and I did respond to it because I think they were very unfair. If the Robinson Grant employees would like to give me one example of any time I hindered them or tried to tell them what to do or gave them any kind of order, I would just invite them to come up here or do it on Facebook or make a comment anywhere you would like. I'm sure the newspaper will do it for you. I, what's hilarious is... Uh, Chief Kitty, I tell the police to do stuff all the time, of course, through the city manager. Thousands of things. I'm sure you can look through my email and I ask for stuff all the time. Public works, harass them to death. Everything I see that needs done, I tell them. The finance department, you know, we've done a lot of stuff with the finance department. I've pushed for things there. The only time I've ever made a suggestion anything about the Robinson Grand is I went to one show there and the cars were going by fast when I came out, and I asked for the police department to come out there after shows while people came out. And I would invite Mr. Malfajo, who sent a smart email the other day, saying he'd like investigations of everybody's emails of anything that we've said that we were trying to hinder the Robinson Grant or hoping it would fail. Please search my emails. I'll give you my phone. You can go through my text messages, too, if you'd like. I have nothing against the Robinson Grant, and I have taken no action against it ever. And I hope that's abundantly clear now. And as far as, you know, this blow up we had with the employees, I think it was completely unnecessary. It was damaging to the city, it was damaging to the Robinson Grant, and it was damaging to those employees. 
And it was all because of Mr. Malfajo. It was not because of those employees. So my anger was misplaced when I got mad at those employees. That should not have been shared. That was personnel information inside internal city document. It should not have been shared. So you can act like it was cool, but it wasn't. Are we clear on that? Is that why you... Uh, okay, let's point of order here. Now, point of order. Second. Point of order. I just want to make sure we're continue clear. Continue on, Gary. Going forward, personnel documents, you understand that's not the right thing to do with them. That, that's why you posted... That's why you posted when they discovered that I was the one that leaked it. That's why you put it on Facebook. Exactly. You don't think that's different than a personnel document, Mr. Mouse Same Joe? thing. If it's the same thing, is it? It's fine. You know what? Let's just move on. I am all for the success of the Robinson Grand. And, you know, I've went to as many shows there as anybody, and I've never said anything bad about it. You know, when we very first started, the first, you know, it may have been the first or second meeting. It was definitely by the first work session we had. We questioned the finances. And then we learned a little more. And, you know, I don't think we've talked about it since in public. Have we talked about it since? No. There has never been anything against the Robinson Grand. And, I, and I'm not angry at any of the people that come here to speak, like Ms. Broughton. You know, the CARES Act money, though, just for your information, the only CARES Act money that we've spent to this point is to upgrade the electrical at the amphitheater and to build pickleball courts. There's $6 million sitting in an account that we're trying to decide what to do with. So we have not cut off the Robinson Grand. But you haven't given it to them. But we haven't spent it. That was my point. Yeah, but we haven't spent it. Once again, I, I'm not jumping on you. Just, that's all I have. Let's be positive other than that. Thank you, Thank Gary. You. Appreciate it. Will? Let's bear with me here. Let, let's start with the good news. I have a prepared statement here, so if I sound like I'm churning off, just touch me. Uh, Please come out to the Winterfest uh, Christmas Parade and Winterfest on Saturday. So much great stuff happening in Jackson Square and in town. Uh, there's also an event at the Board of Education Building with uh, CASA, as well as towards the Clarksburg History Museum. Please go out and support those groups. Uh, please support these events as well. And get out and enjoy the Visitors Bureau and what the volunteers from the Visitors Bureau put together for our city. Uh, I know I'll be there Friday and, and part of Saturday. I'm going to be out of town for a little bit. Uh, I'm thrilled. Uh, our city manager is in the process of starting an unsafe building commission like we heard about from Huntington City officials in our last work session. And I believe this will make the process more efficient and more transparent in regards to condemned and abandoned homes. So, you know, in regards to the 800-pound uh, gorilla in the room, uh, you know, I was shocked. I was, I think I was shocked as everybody else when I received the resignation letters from Mr. Tolley and Ms. Moore. Uh, I personally had no idea. And, and I'll, I'll put an asterisk on that, uh, that there were internal issues with the current council and the city manager, with the exception of information I learned from Ms. Broughton and others on the campaign trail in 2021, and, you know, and face-to-face -face conversations with my constituents on the campaign trail. You know, and, and those were stories from different and opposing sides in, in, the, in the argument, and, you know, and previous administrations. Uh, you know, so I took it with a grain of salt. And uh, because there's always going to be multiple sides to every story. And, you know, as far as I knew, I personally thought, you know, things were, were pretty good over there. And, in fact, uh, you know, I, I was looking at information, uh, you know, uh, on the Internet today. You know, uh, Mr. Tolley, he told the Exponent Telegram on June 30th, <laughs> the day before we were all sworn in, that the Clarksburg West Virginia's Robinson Grand Performing Arts Center is moving in the right direction. So, you know, I was more shocked to learn not too much later, after I received the resignation letters, uh, that West Virginia News and the Exponent Telegram had the re resignation letters breaking on their Facebook feed. Uh, you know, my initial thought was Mr. Tolley and Ms. Moore had told the ET, uh, but after reading the article, obviously it was clear that someone on council had notified the press. And, uh, you know, the drama that unfolded on social media was sad, shameful, and regretful. So, you know, let me pre uh, preface by saying that I had personal reservations about the Robinson Grand in 2012, 2013, when the, when the talks were going on about it. Uh, you know, and I, I told several people on the campaign trail that's, what, that's how I felt about it. Uh, but, you know, never in my campaign or my platform, my agenda to be on city council, you know, I was targeting the Robinson Grand for anything. You know, I believe that most people have heard me say that it has to be supported and it has to be the crown jewel of Clarksburg 
uh, for our investment and, and the recovery of our city. It's, you know, it's not the revitalization, it's the recovery of Clarksburg. Uh, you know, so I find it disappointing, and you know, I expressed it to Mr. Malcho so briefly earlier, you know, that he felt compelled to email the resignation letters to uh, the former mayor, uh, the news, a uh, member of the public who's present today, uh, Ms. Ms. Broughton. And, you know, it, it has hurt the integrity of not only our council, but the entire city itself and the Robinson Grant. And it shows to our constituents and our employees that electronic information is no longer private and sensitive personal matters are subject to dispersal to anyone who has access to it. And I also believe the release of the resignation letters violated Chapter 8, Section C, Item C of the Personnel Administrative Policies and Procedures Manual, which I will read to you, which I include in an email. I'm sure maybe some of you have seen it. Uh, disclosure of confidential information. No city employee, and of course, we're city employees, that's kind of a gray area, shall willfully and knowingly disclose for pecuniary gain to any other person confidential information acquired by him in the course of and any reason of his official duties, nor shall any public official or employee use any such information for the purpose of pecuniary gain. Notice that the language specifically states public official and not public employee. I also find it very hypocritical that Mr. Malfoy said today in a public statement that he felt auditing the emails was a waste of time and resources. He spoke earlier a minute ago about that. Uh, but on November 30th, he demanded the city manager compile a list, and the list is this thick, I'm sure you guys will see it, uh, of all the email correspondence between the city manager and council regarding the Robinson Grant, presumably so he could email the same people, maybe more, of what was being said about the RG and private emails. I personally have nothing to hide in the emails. I think I stated in an email, you may have seen it. I have no problem uh, admitting that I personally reached out to our city manager twice to voice my concerns and disappointment when I received complaints from my constituents and concerns regarding the vaccine, uh, vaccine requirement to attend the second showing stump. And while I was disappointed by his response that he gave me uh, by telephone, it, the decision was made and there wasn't much I could do about it. I did not pursue anything after that. With the exception of the interest in knowing the differences between the two shows when it came to attendance costs and sales. I just wanted to know the difference between them. Something I didn't share with anybody, it's just something I, I kept and read. So, you know, I don't believe this is the act of a whistleblower, valiant, you know, do good stuff in here. This isn't Ed Snowden, this isn't Julian Assange, WikiLeaks. This is the resignation letters of two city employees who had issues with the city and its leadership, obviously. It seems like the proper channels were avoided and intentionally released to show the city and members of council in a negative light. Something that I find below petty, childish, and repugnant. In the end, I would like to wish Brian and Emily the best in their endeavors. I thought they were doing a good job, with the exceptions of the concerns I voiced to Mr. Falk. And I believe we will find a solution to keep the RG on the right track, and its success will not be determined by the departure of Mr. Tolley and Ms. Moore. I honestly believe that if things went differently in the last 72 hours, we may have reached a compromise with those people, uh, you know, through some negotiations and, you know, trying to work some stuff out. But after what's transpired, that's not going to happen. So. You know, I, I, it's unfortunate, and, uh, you know, I, I'm displeased, and, uh, you know, it, I, I don't know what more I can add, <laughs> with the exception of, uh, you know, have a great weekend, try to try to enjoy Winterfest, you know, and, uh, you know, we'll, we will move on. I think, uh, you know, we will find the right people to run the Robinson Grant, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure I like the idea of a committee, because I, I think we still have to have an executive director of the Robinson Grant. Uh, who that is, well, I'm sure we'll find out. And I want, I want to make it a, a speedy process. I want to get somebody in there that knows what they're doing. It's a nationwide search. Let's find that person wherever they may be and come in here and do it right. Uh, you know, then let's put everything behind us and hopefully that doesn't affect the process. Thanks. Thank you, Will. I appreciate those comments. Uh, Vice Mayor? I also prepared some comments. Um, I first would like to say that um, Winterfest, I hope everyone does come out and attend Winterfest. Winterfest is just another example of the shift in the culture of this city, which will not be stopped. Um, when you're hired or placed in a position by a person or group, it's completely understandable that you would feel some commitment to those individuals that put you there, especially when the situation is working to your favor. This has been spun that the three existing council members that were voted to abolish the stranglehold on this city had a personal issue with the RG and those that were placed there by the past administration. And that is just simply not true. 
Can and do we all three agree that the RG is not what the majority of the citizens in our city wanted or needed? Yes. Does that mean we would cut our noses off to spite our faces and want it to fail? No. I'm really not sure what all the ruckus is about. I view this differently, although I wish Mr. Tolley and Ms. Moore luck in their futures. This is an opportunity to continue to further grow this city. It's an opportunity to continue to cleanse this city of the culture of the us against them and to continue on the path of working for all of the citizens in this city. I have said numerous times that this movement is one that cannot be stopped because the majority of us involved have intentions that are for the betterment of Clarksburg and not of that of our personal gain. I truly believe this is God's will. Stay the course, boys. Don't allow the noise and attempts to distract you from what we're meant to do here. Keep focused on what truly matters. Just because a few voices and opinions are seen on Facebook most often doesn't mean they represent the majority of our citizens. In fact, I believe it's a giant rabbit hole that is only good for smoking mirrors and time wasting. Again, I urge you all to stay the course, keep working for the people in this city that have been longing for the people in these seats to put them first and to make their city the best it can possibly be. Thank you. Thank you for those comments, Vice Mayor. Very well said. I too prepared a statement. I usually like to speak off the cuff, but I feel that this was so important uh, that I needed to put my words down so that I can make sure I cover everything that I wanted to cover. Um, and right now, it's hard to find just the right words to say tonight. There has been so much progress made in the couple years since Lily, Gary, and I were elected. It's not easy. It's not been without tough challenges, but, when it, but it's been extremely rewarding seeing this town shift in visible ways. I, know, I knew it would not be easy when I started this battle. I knew we were ruffling feathers, and, we, and for that, there would be heavy backlash. But I never thought would be under, undermined, even from those who claim they love and care about this city and want it to be successful. I think one word that describes my feelings best would be disappointed, very disappointed. It's hard to push things forward when you have to dodge pitfalls and landmines, but when your own colleagues use newspapers and paint a skewed negative one-sided picture of things, the disappoint, disappointed is almost not a strong enough word. I want to be very clear. I did not interfere with how the RG was run. On no, uh, no level did I ever interfere with how the RG was run. We have a city manager oversees the department, and I trust him to do his job. I never requested anything, ever, except quarterly financials because my responsibility is to the taxpayers. When, Ms. when Mr. Rexroad left the manager's pr uh, proposed replacing him with two employees, I supported his decision because I wanted the theater to have what they needed to be successful. I love that theater. It beams with nostalgia. I saw The Godfather, my favorite movie of all time there, and one of the nicest weddings I ever attended in that building, catered by my cousins, D. Cardi. I have a lot of incredible memories at that theater. Yes, I was critical when I ran for office about how much money was put into this project. Our city was crumbling around us, and we were putting millions of dollars in that theater. So I was very critical. That was not an indictment of Mr. Tolley, Ms. Moore, or Mr. Rexroad, but it's become very clear that's how it was taken. I have never wanted financial transparency. I have only wanted financial transparency for taxpayers and cooperation between the team at the RG and the city manager. The theater was ours, and regardless of the spin claiming we wanted to harm it, we all very much wanted it to succeed. 
It has to. Our city depends on that. That brings us to this debacle. Jim, when you made your pitch to be mayor, your main point was wanted to bring us together to move the city forward. That was your pitch. That partnership would be your main goal. This is creating one heck of a partnership, Jim. Those were clearly just empty words. John Miller says in his editorial that we are wrongly upset because complaints were made publicly and not why these complaints were made. The fact is, before anyone could even digest what was happening, Kathy Goins, Marsha Broughton, and the newspaper had copies of confidential resignation letters. Some of council not, have not even read them yet, and the newspaper was already dropping a story on it. If that's the advice the past Mary Goins gave you, how, how much could she or anyone involved really care about this city or the theater? How was sharing this information with her or Marsha, Marsha Broughton helpful to the citizens? What would that accomplish giving the, that information to those folks, Jim? As an attorney who works for a law firm that represents our city, surely Ms. Broughton knows that sharing this information is a breach of ethics and more importantly, opens up the city liable. Call me crazy, but isn't it a serious conflict that a firm working for the city has a, a lawyer involved in this fiasco? How does catching counsel completely off guard, airing personnel issues, or perpetrating continual discord with our city help anything? Perhaps if there was even a small window of opportunity to digest things, we could have sat down with Mr. Tolley and Ms. Moore and potentially work things out as uh, Will has stated. This reeks of personal agenda and Vendetta, a vendetta. You took the very, you, James, you took very, very bad advice from your folks. Again, so disappointing, I really thought that we were coming together as a council, that this group was a complimentary team. But to spin this breach as heroic on your part is laughable. You being, you brag about sharing confidential employee communication like it's a badge of honor. After you got caught, you shared it. Until you got caught, you had no comment, James. Have you no ethical or moral compass? In closing, I'm requesting the city manager draft a resolution censoring Councilman Malfajo and condemning and denouncing him for the unethical breach of trust co committed. I would also like council to consider filing an ethics violation against Malfajo. As council people, we all make mistakes, honest mistakes, but intentionally releasing confidential information to anyone for the sake of undermining this council will not be overlooked while I serve as mayor. My only goal is progress. I want this council to invest their energy and time positively, positively, not to be drained by unnecessary drama. We have way too much work to be done. Lastly, I ask the citizens of this city not to lose confidence in us. Please continue to work with us, and together we can and will focus on making positive progress. There are wonderful things happening. Proof positive that is Clarksburg's first Winterfest put together by our outstanding new CVB that Mr. Malfajo opposed and uh, the phenomenal director Tina Yoke. I can't wait to see everyone at the, out there during Winterfest. Uh, I will now entertain a motion to go in executive session. Your Honor, I'd like to say the record straight. I have never received a copy of the resignation. I have never looked at it, and my firm does not work for the city. Thank you. Well, I'd like to say it otherwise because I got a copy of it, but we'll, get, we'll move on. For 
pursuant to Chapter 6, Article 9A, Section 4 of the West Virginia Code, I move that Council adjourn into executive session to discuss personnel matters and that the following members be present. The Mayor, members of Council, the City Manager, and the City Attorney. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjournment.
Apologies to the media for our long executive session. I'm sorry that they all went home. Gary, just apologize to the media. <laughs> what did you say? I apologize to the media yeah, for us taking so long. You think it's still watching? Oh, it's still on. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd the mayor go so we can adjourn this? I'll make a motion as soon as he walks back in here. Do we need him? <laughs> Acting Mayor Riffle, I oh, she's vice mayor. make a motion. Oh, yeah. Vice Mayor. <laughs> oh, he wanted to use the gavel. <laughs> vice Mayor Junkins, I make a motion we adjourn. Oh, I make a motion that we leave executive session. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.